what the hell are you doing with your life, man? What are you doing with your money? If you're a dude, are you out there blowing money on chicks? Are you out there right now wasting your money on sex, drugs, going out to eat, buying the most expensive fancy car you can find to impress the women? Wake up, dude. Wake up. And same thing for you, women. Are you out there blowing your money on purses, clothes, going out to eat with your girlfriends all the time, hitting the club, trying to pick up a dude? I don't care what age you are. You need to wake up. And this is your wake-up call right now. If you are around my age, which I'm going to say conservatively, late 40s, early 50s, or even if you're younger, and you think to yourself, you know, I'm just going to enjoy my life now. I got money. I work hard. I'm just going to go buy whatever I want. I'm not going to be too concerned about when I retire because you know what? The government's going to take care of me. Yeah. Ooh, it's all going to be rosy, peaches and cream. The government is going to take care of me. Social Security will always be there, and I'll collect my money from Uncle Sam, and it'll all be good. If you think the government is literally going to throw you a lifeboat at 65, you better think again, because I'm here to tell you right now, you are the lifeboat and if you got holes in your boat right now you better learn how to financially patch those holes up and I mean fast take a look around you look at what's happening in the world even today and then listen to what your politicians are you know what they're subtly hinting you know and just put two and two together like you know I've read recently online that Social Security the way that things are going right now is going to run out by the year 2029 think about that that's maybe not we're getting close to a new year that's we're looking at another seven years of Social Security and then it's possibly going to be gone forever because I mean what is Social Security it's a Ponzi scheme right think about it it is a ponzi scheme you've got the young workers that are paying into the social security system while they're able to work so it's a big large funnel the money is coming in from the workers and it's trickling down to the retirees the ones that have already done their time now they're retired and they're collecting money from uncle sam at least they think it's from uncle sam but it's actually from all the other workers putting money in the pot and it trickles down to you at the bottom. So now what happens when nobody's working? Look at the statistics right now of unemployment and what's going on. Do you honestly think when you turn 65, let's say a decade in the future, that you're going to have a paycheck in your hand from Uncle Sam because what is going on now is going to affect you later okay there is no hope there's no hope that that Social Security check is going to be there for you because if it keeps going the way it is and the young workers when it's time for you to collect you're relying on the Millennials up here to be popping money into the Social Security funnel and having it trickle down here to you. But what if they're not working? What if nobody is hardly working and there's no money coming in the Social Security system? So you think to yourself, oh, well, no, that's okay. I'm sure Uncle Sam's gonna, cook, he's gonna kick in and print some more money like he did the stimulus checks and I'm gonna be okay. Do you wanna bet your life on that? Seriously? Do you wanna bet your retirement life on the government's taking care of you. I personally don't. I think that's foolish. That's foolish thinking. 
So what do you do? And if you think it's too late, it's not. Well, I have got four tips. These are the things that I have learned over my many years of working history of what you can do now to save for Social Security or to save when it's not there, to save money to help you survive, okay? And not only survive, but thrive. Anybody can do this, but what it takes is discipline, persistence, and being consistent with what you're doing. So what are they? What are the four steps? Well, I'll tell you what they are. Number one is living below your means. Number two is budgeting. Number three is saving. And number four is investing. Really, one cannot be accomplished without the other. It's a connect the dot strategy that will get you to what you need in your retirement years. So let's break this down just really quick, okay? Let's break it down. What do I mean by living below your means? Let's take a hypothetical number. Let's say that you make $1,000 a month, okay? This is the money that you have coming in every single month. So in your brain, you're thinking, yeah, I could afford rent, bills, food, gas, I can do it on a thousand bucks a month. But what happens if a rainy day rolls around and you don't have any money to fix your car? What are you gonna do? What if you have no credit? Even if you did, how are you gonna pay that credit card off if you have no money left over? This is what I'm talking about. You've got to put, and this is in my opinion, this is a safety net I've found that worked for me. Whatever I am making per month, I put away 30% to go to my savings and to go to my investments. That's what I do. So I don't really have $1,000 to live off every month. I have $700 to live off every month. So then I go look for a place within the $700 limit that includes my bills and all my utilities and my gas and my food and my miscellaneous expenses that can help me to survive. Okay, that's step one. Now that you got that set and you know you can live within that $700, like I said, hypothetical number, then you move on to step two. And what's step two? Step two is budgeting. What do you do? Well, come on. You can't just say, okay, I've already paid my bills. I put aside a third of what I bring home. Now I'm just going to spend money and hope I don't overspend until I get my next paycheck. You can't do that, man, because you will overspend every time. Take a look at going to the grocery store, right? You go to there, pick up a few things, and what do you blow? Forty to fifty dollars, right? Because you didn't strategize your money. And then the next thing you know, you're dipping into the money that you put aside because you can't live. You need the money back. This is that vicious cycle. So budgeting is key. What I do, out of the money I have left, that after I put the other money aside, is I figure out what are my bills, get them covered. What do I need for gas and food? Get it covered. What do I need is a little bit of cushion each week, just in case some little miscellaneous thing pops up. I don't know, the cat runs out of cat litter. You gotta run up the street, right? There, I'm that's what I'm talking about. So, let's say for instance, you budget $100 a week to cover that, and you live off of that. I mean, you do not go over that budget at all and you will survive. You may have to cut out going out to eat every time. You may have to stop going to the club. These are things you're just gonna have to sacrifice. You're gonna have to delay your gratification today to take care of your future retired self tomorrow, okay? So budgeting, number two. Let's move on to number three. Let's say you got one and two down, right? 
Now we're on savings. Now before we jump to investing, think about this. You have to ask yourself this one question. What is it that I need monthly? What are my monthly expenses? And how much of that do I need to survive on in case I lose my job? Do I need six months worth of emergency funds? Or should I extend that out to 12 months of emergency funds, right? That's the risk factor that you got to look at. Do you think you, can, you feel really comfortable if you lost your job tomorrow that you can find another one within six months and save for six months emergency funds? If you feel you can't do it, then you go for 12 months, okay? Now, let's say for instance, the $1,000 a month example. I want to do personally 12 months, okay? I want 12 months cushion in case I lose my job tomorrow. So then I need to save $12,000 in a liquid fund, probably a money market, get a little interest, but I'm able to access that money without penalty in case things fall apart, okay? So that's step one. If you don't have an emergency fund, then you damn well better start one, and you better do it today every little bit of help. So you've already put $300 aside out of your thousand. That was your third. You take that 300 bucks and you pop it into your savings account and you just rinse and repeat until you get to the mark that you want to be at. 12,000 in this example. Okay, so let's say you did step one, two, and three. You're maxed out on your emergency fund. You saved. Now what do you do with the third of the money you've been putting aside? Now you invest. Now the question is, what do I invest in? Well, again, it comes down to your own personal risk level. Do you feel comfortable riding the stock market? If you do, diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversify. Pick out some stocks that you feel comfortable with. Spread them out you know, between the S&P. Maybe you can go to emergency, emergent markets. Um, also look at bonds treasury bills, all of that. And then if you just don't want to do that, maybe you want to put a little bit of real estate in there. Maybe buy some physical real estate if you're comfortable running it and being a landlord and collecting another form of passive income. Or if you're not comfortable with that, like me, then maybe you should just go with paper ETF REITs. You know, you can invest in real estate through what they call REITs. Real Estate Investment Trust is short for that. And go that route. And then, you know, maybe add, add a little um, hedge against your inflation. Buy yourself some metals, man. Buy some gold, buy some silver. Back your money up in case the whole bank system crashes, which is a strong possibility, right? This is how you secure yourself, not only now, but in the future when you are old and you're ready to Quit working. So when the day comes and you look to Uncle Sam and you say, look, I'm retired. I'm ready for my Social Security check. Can I have it now? Can I have it, Uncle? May I? May I have it now? And he says, sorry, there's no more money in the Social Security fund. And then you're going to say, you know what? Sayonara, dude. It's cool because I already have it. I have enough money. I can retire comfortably. I was just asking if I could get some more. But since there's no more in the pot, I'm not worried about it. I can survive on my own. Okay? Now we can go in a whole other direction on top of that. Like if you don't feel like you, your money that you have saved from your social, or the money that you've saved from budgeting, saving and investments is not enough to actually survive in the United States, which in my opinion is really not because the cost of living is just going through the roof, then you need to start looking at other avenues. You don't have to stay in the United States forever. You don't. All you have to do is think outside the box. Man, you can move to another country. It's not as hard as you think. If the cost of living is lower, and your dollar goes further, why wouldn't you do it? If they have better health care, 
that's cheaper, if maybe even free, why wouldn't you go? Why would you stay, right? You can become what they call an expat. That could be a conversation for another day. So anyway, I hope you found this valuable. Let me know your thoughts about this. Drop me a comment below the video. I would appreciate it. And hey, if you've got an idea for another topic for next Thursday, let me know that too. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you my thoughts on it, okay? So anyway, I want you to take care of yourself. Don't let the man get you, baby.